calling all flock members. If you want to become truly elite, for just a dollar a month, you too can become an elite bad bird. Check out my Patreon account. Link is in the description. Hello there, my flock. Bad Raven here. And we are on Jason X. And this one is the big one. Because he is now in space. Yay, 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 yay. Well, sounded better in post production. So we have uh, Jason. He's went everywhere in the, on the planet. He's went to New York. He's went all over the hills of Crystal Lake. And now he is in space. As I told you, New Line Cinema start, started making these movies with the last one, the one I reviewed before, Jason Goes to Hell. So now they're on their second one with Jason X. Now this one was kind of put into production by uh, Sean S. Cunningham. He wanted to make, to have one made in between before Jason, Ready vs. Jason, because it was, it was kind of like a post-production or pre-production heck. So, I mean, they said they wanted to make another one, so they came up with a story, and they said they thought they would set it in space, so give it a little, you know, a new taste of scenery, you know, a different locale that can, they could really promote, I guess, Jason, in this uh, type of world. And really, I love sci-fi. I mean, I'm a sci-fi nut, and you had horror, the Jason franchise, because I love Jason, too, in the Friday 13th series. So when they put it in space, it was kind of right up my alley, because I like both. Even though it was in a totally different realm and totally different from any other Friday 13th that I've ever seen, I still like the concept. But me and Andrew have this as our guilty pleasure. We went to Scarefest 9 when we met Kane and got our, uh, him to sign uh, my poster for Part 8. And uh, Andrew, I told him my son Andrew, uh, guilty pleasure was Jason X. And of course, Kane looked up at us and kind of winked at Andrew because he... He uh, must have a soft spot for it, too. So he kind of liked it that we liked uh, Part 10. It's not no great movie by any stretch of the imagination, but I liked it a heck of a lot better than Jason Goes to Hell. So I'm just going to kind of go into this and kind of give you the uh, uh, the overall, overall movie as best I, I can uh, uh, break it down. This was made in 2001. I think it came out in 2002, though. I think it was released overseas first. Then in 2002, it, you know, like it came here like in April, I think. It was kind of in the can for a few months until we got to see it. And I didn't go watch this at the theater. I don't even know if it had a theatrical release around where I lived. Because after the Jason Goes to Hell did so poorly, I guess they didn't figure it would do any good. But like I said, it's set in space. And this comes on the heel of a lot of movies in 96. Well, we're set in space, and I don't know if you know uh, what these other ones were. Like, Leprechaun 4 was in space. It's called, it was called Leprechaun 4 in space, and it was made in 1996. And also in 1996, Hellraiser even went into uh, space. Well, different generations, but one generation was in space. And Pinhead himself was on a, on a spaceship. And that was called Hellraiser Bloodline. And it was kind of strange that, you know, then, then we had Jason in space. I had this theory that they had this one set, even though these were different companies that made it. Because Leprechaun was made by um, uh, some independent company, but Hellraiser was made by Dimension. But I think that in my theory <laughs> about these um, horror films being set in space, is they must have had a set that they had built, and everybody used that same set to put their horror films in. So everybody's like, hey, let's put Hellraiser in space. Hey, let's put... Leprechaun in space. What about putting Jaws in space? Well, couldn't go that far. But you know what I'm saying? I just had this theory that they were trying to set everything in space. Just uh, like a, what do you call that? A, kind of a fad. A fad of doing it. It's like, like when they did the 3D with Jaws 3D and Amityville 3D and Friday 13 3D. There was all 3D movies uh, before. Well, anyway, that was just my opinion on that one. Uh, let me break this down. Of course, it's got the great Kane Hodder, as I said, playing Jason for his fourth and last time in Jason X, which if everybody knows the X is a Roman numeral for 10, so it's Jason 10. So uh, Kane was actually got to be Jason through this whole movie, which was 
you know, great. Let me go into who directed it and who stars in it. Uh, this was written by Victor Miller, which I didn't know. It was directed by James Isaac. And, of course, it starts Kane Hodder as Jason. Alexa Doing as Rowan. Marcus Perlo as Sergeant Marcus. Jonathan Potts as Professor Lowe. You got Peter Mensa as Sergeant Brodsky. Which he was from 300. He's the one who got kicked down in the in the pit by King Leonidas. Leonidas. I'm trying to find the one that played the cyborg. They almost say Lisa Ryder played KM14. She was the android on board. Okay, like I said, it was made. It came out in 2001. It was set in the. It was set in 2455 time period. The beginning of the movie is set in 2010, which was only 2001 when it came out, because I guess they, the future they put way out there. Jason has been caught, and what was strange, he has hair. Uh, Kane had hair on, uh, or Jason had hair in this one, and his mask was totally different, and he had one really good eye, so I, I think that was what they were promoting, that his regenerative skills, he had regenerated his body, I guess, from the, the last one. And was able to have more of a you know body figure. He wasn't. He had, had decent clothes. It wasn't great clothes, but raggedy. But you didn't see his parts of him coming out anywhere. So he must have regenerated that much. Well, they have him chained up in this like Crystal Lake holding facility because I guess the I guess really got high tech in Crystal Lake at this time. But anyway, you have the doctor, um, the lady doctor, Rowan. And she is like over Jason being transferred. And uh, of course, you get your government officials coming in there, your military. They're going to take Jason from her against their wishes. And they want to use him because of his regenerating skills of his body, put it into a military application so they'll be able to fight better in war. So, you know how all that always ends. It always ends up really great when you're trying to transfer a, a, a psycho killer. Jason gets out of the little welcoming party that they're getting ready to take him to the military and he kills all of them like like split and leaves the one rowan uh character to get him into the cryogenic freezing chamber and she pushes him in there after a kind of a cat and mouse kit chase and he freezes and of course he she's looking at him through the uh the portal and he's freezing she's looking through the portal of the of the cryogenic freezing chamber that she's pushed uh jason into and of course when he sees her before he freezes he stabs his machete plumb through the metal right through her she stands so close to stabs her in the gut well that releases a lot of the of the, the freezing stuff out of that hole and they have to, it has to completely close off the chamber it does automatically and she gets frozen in with it well that jumps to 2455 and you see a bunch of students coming down to this facility in crystal lake and they find her and they find Jason frozen. And needless to say, they're always in these movies. They look at the little booklet about him and they find out that, uh, you know, they could uh, be able to save her, but they don't think they can save him. But they kind of want to, because uh, they find out he's like a great big mass murderer back in the day. So they want to take them both on their ship. They take him back to the Grendel, which is the ship that they're on. And this kind of reminds me a lot of Alien. Uh, I was telling Andrew while I was watching it last night because you got the xenomorphic alien, which is Jason in this movie. He and it kind of gave me that same thrill I had with the alien that you know the alien's loose and it's going to kill anybody anytime. Well, Jason's loose, and he he don't hide as much as the alien did in the original, but the alien movie. But he is really cool as a xenomorph in this movie. And that's why I call him in this movie the xenomorph. So Jason gets put on the ship, and of course, you know, they're going to do something stupid by accidentally thawing him out. They always do this crazy stuff. They get the girl back in there. They, uh, they have all this new technology where these little, like, ant, they call them ants, come out, and they regenerate uh, her body where she's been stabbed and save her life. And then she wakes up, and they tell her, like, she's 400 and some years older than she was when she uh, got frozen. So that kind of, she takes it pretty good. <laughs> she's like uh, they tell me she saved the other uh, uh, Jason also and they're like oh no you need to get rid of him you get rid of him by then there's a woman the doctor in the facility there on the Grendel is like going through his blood and, and, and she even takes his mask off at one point to look at his face and sees all the deformities of it and figures out why he wears his mask 
And while she's doing all this, somehow there's a heater of some sort thawing him out. And he thaws out, of course, wakes up. And I always like in these movies, they're like sitting there and they hear something in the background and they look around and there's nothing. And then it's always kind of strange how they always don't see what's going on. But it's a horror film. He wakes up. he got a really good kill on her. He puts her face into like freezing uh, cold uh, water. And it freezes her solid and he busts her face open like a glass. It's really, really shockingly good practical kill. And it was some really, I mean, for the low, the budget being so low, I guarantee it was very, probably under $5 million. But uh, don't quote me on that. But they they did pretty good with the special. They had virtual reality in this thing. Uh, they had space. They had the spaceships. They had explosions in space. I think they uh, they did very well. The, the actual sets for the inside of the spaceship was a little tackier than normal. They didn't spend much much on the interior, but you still got the gist of it being a spaceship. And Kane is also awesome as Jason. So he's going through there. He's killing anybody. As soon as you have you get two lovebirds in there, and he at least gets one of them at the beginning. They know he's loose. That's all I got to tell you. Everybody in the ship knows he's, knows he's loose. And you got the one character from 300 that's like this, he's a sergeant. And he is really super cool. He comes up against Jason and he think he's dead and then end up uh, getting away from him. And they regenerate him too to uh, his wounds so he can fight Jason again. And he's really stands toe to toe to Kane in this. But also there's an android that I was telling you about. Sergeant Brodsky is the uh, the guy from 300. Uh, that's the one that stands toe to toe with Jason. But also, uh, Lisa Ryder KM14. She is an android that they have created, and she's like in uh, love with one of the other men on the ship. He has created her. They call her his love bot. So, you know, whatever. But she is like super cool. She's super advanced uh, android. She goes toe to toe with Jason even better than the sergeant does. But anyway, they're trying to, of course, uh, stay away from Jason, trying to get uh, rescued from the ship, and he annihilates their whole military army, you know, <laughs> down to nothing, one by one, with uh, uh, with his machete. Well, he kind of gets a uh, instrument from the uh, the woman that was doing his like autopsy and kills a few. Then he finally gets his machete, and see the main uh, the main fellow, Professor Lowe, finds out that Jason would be worth a lot of money because he's wanting to be able to sell him so they can continue their research and they're on their ship and everything like that and he finds out he's worth a lot of money to collectors because of his regeneration skills so he wants to keep jason alive everybody else is trying to kill him but he's want to keep him alive for the money there's a really cool scene where uh he professor uh, Lowe was with jason and he's like and they got jason's original machete there and he's trying to make a deal with jason to uh make money for both of them he says and Jason just like sees his machete and then grabs it and he says oh, oh he just wanted his machete he, he's okay then you hear him scream later you know Jason has pretty much used it on him so it's a, some cool stuff like that uh, I like the uh, all the the different types of virtual reality they lose use in it because there's like two guys playing, playing like a game and like Jason comes up in the middle of it and they think he's part of the uh, the program and they find out real quick he's not after he like cuts their heads off so they do a lot of virtual reality in certain parts. But anyway, Jason is like going through there, killing everybody, all the military, and they're getting some really cool kills there. You find out KM14, she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jason, and she's got this like black outfit on, and she's got her guns, and she comes up there, and she's like shooting Jason big time and kicking him and everything like that. And he stabs her in the stomach, and she falls down like, oh, you know, you, you destroyed me. But when he goes back to grab the, the machete out of her stomach, she's like, got gotcha. you. And she's like, starts shooting him like big time and he's like falling backwards and he's got this big old gun and she like blows his head completely in two and knocks him onto that one of those uh, medical uh, devices that's got the ant things that come out and fix you. Well, they leave him there and that, that uh, medical uh, medical uh, bed that she, he fell on has got the ants on it, start using, they start grabbing him and start, uh, reaper, you know, trying to repair him. And there's not enough material, so it uses mechanical stuff around him and makes him into Uber Jason, which he's got the neat silver mask and he's got the red, you know, evil eyes, uh, machine eyes, I guess you could say. And he is like out for bear. So he comes back after him 
she tries to, um, the Android K14, KM14, tries to fight him again and he knocks her head off. So the guy, that her, her uh, human, grabs her head and they take off running. Well, while all this time's going, they have caused to call a, a rescue ship to save them because they have no way out. Because one of the uh, girls get on their escape hatch ship and she won't let them out because she gets scared and she freaks out and like blows up, practically blows up the ship and it's like falling apart. So they, they send an SOS out to another ship to come pick them up. While they're going to the uh, to the, the gate to be able to rendezvous with that ship, they, they, the, the, uh, the rescue ship hooks onto them, but they can't open the door. So the sergeant that had been stabbed in the chest that they had regenerated and got him back has to get up on top of the ship in a spacesuit and uh, repair the uh, gate so they can get out. While they're waiting at the gate, as they're waiting at the gate, Rowan, the, the woman from the Earth with 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 Fountain with Jason, is like freaking out because Jason's coming on to them really fast. And so what they do, they use virtual reality and they create Camp Crystal Lake right there. And they put in two teenage girls and Jason like sees them and he's like, he don't know. He's like, it's weirding him out because he can't figure it out that uh, the lake's there and he's these two teenage girls and they're acting really stupid because they're like programs like, oh, we like premarital sex and we like smoking pot and all this. And, and Jason's like, look at him really weird. And they get in sleeping bags. And of course, you look back later and he's like busting. He's using one girl in the sleeping bag and smashing another girl and then slamming that one against a tree. Uh, so it's really got some really cool <laughs> scenes with that virtual reality. Well, he finally... I think something happens and the, all that fades off and he sees them trying to get on the ship and by the time that they get on the ship uh, Jason starts to get on it too and of course uh, the sergeant Sergeant Bronsky uh, stops him right at the time and they start to do their like they start to go at each other as the other ones get on the ship Rowan and the, the one doctor and the, the head of the android make it onto the ship as as uh, Sergeant uh, Brodsky is like getting ready to fight Jason, it's like that scene that they show in the trailer, and they're playing "Let the bodies hit the floor, let the bodies hit the floor," and it's really cool. They come together, and about that time, the whole ship explodes and everything, and the uh, uh, the people rowing and stuff on the ship are looking back and it's "Oh God, Jason's coming out!" And she's in big explosion, and he's coming like right toward the rescue ship. And by that time, Sergeant Brodsky just like comes in with his suit on and just like takes Jason toward uh, Earth. To, uh, I guess it's either Earth 2 or uh, I think it's where they're headed to. It's like Earth. He gets on the back of Jason and he kind of rough he does and rides him right through the, uh, you know, Jason's got his hands out like he's you know, skydiving and he's on the back of him and they go through the, the, you know, the outer layer of the Earth where, you know, the fire, he gets real hot and like Jason's taking all the heat. And he gets, and you see him go through the sky of Earth 2, and you see these two campers, and they look at the, oh, look, it's a shooting star. Oh, it landed in the lake. Let's go check it out. So you see, like, you already got Jason back in the original lake, and, and it just, like, shows his mask, like, falling at the bottom of the lake, the Uber, ja Uber Jason mask falling at the lake, and, you know, it starts over again. So he has reached another lake on Earth 2 to expand to another planet of killing people. So it was, it was neat. They did a lot of cool stuff with this one. I really liked the special effects for the low budget that it was. It's sci-fi, my favorite kind. It's horror too. It was, it was, had comedy, but it, it was, it was neat. I liked it. I mean, I'm not saying it's good as the first few Friday the 13th. I just liked it as a guilty pleasure. It was something, like I said, I wish they had done with uh, Jason Goes to Hell, kind of give it, they gave it a spin, but they just didn't leave Jason in it enough. I think if Jason would have been in that one more, I would probably liked it as a guilty pleasure. They still will not rank higher than the uh, Paramounts for me. Because even though they did try something new, and I kind of liked it because I liked all these other genres that they had with it, I still, it wasn't a f true Friday the 13th Camp Crystal Lake type movie. I might can say I liked it better than uh, Jason Takes Manhattan, but still, it's not the original Paramounts. Tell me what you think. Did you like Jason X? It wasn't really well promoted in my area at that time. Like I said, the last one didn't make that much money. So a lot of people wasn't even, it's kind of like Jason's gone. You know, we don't even think about Jason. So give me your, uh, did, did you see it on video? Most people probably did. Tell me what you thought of Jason X. Did you hate it? Did you like it? Did what? Uh, I would really appreciate any, did, what do you think about the kills? What was your best kill in the movie? I would have to say the best kill in this one, I guess for me, 
was when he froze the girl's face and like smashed her. You know, I thought that was an awesome kill. But I did like the the android in this one really well. Uh, it reminded me of Bishop and Aliens. I know I've got a lot of Alien and Aliens uh, uh, type references, but you know, both movies are really you know are great movies, and I think they were parallel each other really cool in this one. I just want to, uh, to thank the the flock for watching this video and stay tuned because we still got uh, Freddy vs. Jason next and that's a, a classic for me. I, I like that one really well. So come back and watch that with me. I'm not going to make, I think, my Friday 13th deadline. I'm still going to come out with the next two, Freddy vs. Jason, then we got the remake. And I'm going to get those two in and, and then we'll have the whole uh, Jason story done until the next one comes out, whenever that is after the legal battle. So I'd like to, I'd like to say, uh, check out the Patreon account. The link is in the description. Uh, just a dollar a month, you can become Elite Bad Birds. You get your name at the, end of, at the end of every video and I'll say your name and I'll send you a ban saying, we'll get this right this time. Watch Bad Raven on YouTube. Join the flock. That's what it says on the ban and you too can become a member of the Elite Bad Birds. And we're hoping to get one pretty soon. So just keep, keep, uh, we're going to keep plugging away until we get somebody to come and become Elite Bad Birds and we will make you famous. <laughs> We'd like to thank you for uh, watching our videos. And remember, always remember the Bad Raven is your friend. And I appreciate every flop member we got out there. We're going to let you go and we'll talk at you later. And goodbye.